A-level maths indices. Now before we start on the main examples, you need to make sure that you can evaluate using fractional and negative indices, such as in these examples. So if you pause the video now and have a go at evaluating these without using a calculator, and then when you're ready, press play and listen to the explanation. So if we start with 81 to the power of a half, when we raise a number to the power of a half, that is the same as saying the square root of that number. So 81 to the power of a half means the same thing as the square root of 81. So that's nine. If we move on to the middle example at the top, we've got 125 to the power of negative two over three. Now in this index, the three on the denominator of the fraction is telling us to do the cube root of the value, which is five. The cube root of 125 is five. The two on the, on the numerator of the fraction is then telling us to raise that value to that particular power. So our five can be raised to the power two or squared. So that gives us 25. And the negative part tells us to do the reciprocal of that value. So remember we've got the cube root of 125, which is five. We then square it, which gives us 25. And then we do the reciprocal of that. So the answer is one over 25. Moving on to the example on the top right, 343 to the power of negative one third. So here we have to do the cube root of 343 which is seven to the power one, which is seven, and then the reciprocal. So that gives us one over seven. Okay, the example on the bottom left. So here we have to do the fifth root of 32, which is two, and that's because two to the power five is 32. So the fifth root of 32 is two, and then we raise that to the power of six, two to the power six is 64. And for the final example on this page, 729 to the power of 2 thirds, we do the cube root of 729, which is 9, and then we raise that to the power 2. So 9 to the power 2, or 9 squared, is 81. Here's some questions for you to try. Have a go at these. Um, press pause on the video and then when you're ready, press play and the answers will be revealed along with a brief explanation of each. Okay, so there's the answers. If we just go through each one quickly, um, start with part A. A part 1 is asking us to do the square root of 16, which is 4. Part 2 is, is means exactly the same as the cube root of 27 which is three. Um, part B, we have to do two to the power of negative three. So because two cubed is eight, the negative index there means we take the reciprocal of that, so we get one over eight. Part two works in the same way. Five to the power of negative two is one over 25 because five squared is 25. And if we move on to part C, 2 over 3 squared would be 4 over 9, but we've got 2 over 3 to the power of negative 2, so we take the reciprocal of 4 over 9, which is 9 over 4. Part 2 works in a similar way. 1 over 4 cubed is 1 over 64. We have the reciprocal of that, which is 64. Part D, 27 to the power of 2 thirds. We have the cube root of 27 squared. So that's 3 squared which is 9. And part 2 we have the square root of 9 cubed. So that's 3 cubed which is 27. In part E, part 1, we have the cube root of 125 squared and then we take the reciprocal. So that becomes 1 over 25. And in part 2, we have the fourth root of 16 cubed, and then we take the reciprocal. 
so that's 1 over 8. Moving on to part f, if we do the square root of 4 over 9, we get 2 over 3. We then have to cube that, so we get 8 over 27. But then because it's a negative index, we do the reciprocal of 8 over 27, which is 27 over 8. Part 2 works in a similar way, and the answer is 4 over 9. For part g, that's asking us to do the square root of 0.25. Now it's easy to think about that question if you rewrite 0.25 as a fraction. So it's asking for the square root of a quarter. And since the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of a quarter is a half, or 0.5. Part 2, we are doing 0.5 or a half to the power of negative 2. So a half squared is a quarter. And because we've got a negative index there, we do the reciprocal of a quarter, which is 4. And the final part of the question, part h, the first part is saying 32 to the power of 1 fifth, or the fifth root of 32, which is 2. And then the final part, 81 to the power of negative a quarter. If we take the fourth root of 81, we get 3. So 81 to the power of negative a quarter is 1 over 3. Another useful skill is to be able to take a value and write it in such a way that it's the power of a particular number. So all of these values can be written as a power of 4. They can be written in the form 4 to the power of p, where p is a value to be found. So again, have a look at these questions, try to do them first. Once you've had a go, um, you can start the video again and the solutions will appear and um, along with an explanation. So there's the solutions, I'll just explain each one. Part A, the square root of 4 is the same as 4 to the power of a half. Uh, the cube root of a number, we use the power of 1 third, so there we have 4 to the power of 1 third. 16 is 4 squared. 1 is 4 to the power of 0. In fact, any number to the power of 0 is 1. Moving on to part C. 2 is the square root of 4, so there we have 4 to the power of a half. And then in part 2 we've got the reciprocal of that, so that's 4 to the power of negative a half. In part D, 0 0.25 is 1 over 4, so that makes it 4 to the power of negative 1. Part 2 is 1 over 2, so it's 1 over the square root of 4, which is 4 to the power of negative a half. So moving on to part E, these questions require a little bit more explanation. So if we think of 8 as being the square root of 64, 64 is 4 cubed, so I've actually got the square root of 4 cubed. So we've got 4 to the power of 3 over 2. For 32, think of 32 as being 2 to the power 5, then we've actually got the square root of 4 to the power of 5. So we've got 4 to the power of 5 over 2. For part f, we've got 4 multiplied by the cube root of 4, which can be written as 4 to the power 1 multiplied by 4 to the power 1 third, which means we've got 4 to the power of 1 and a third, or 4 to the power of 4 over 3. For part 2, we've got the square root of 4 multiplied by the fifth root of 4. So 4 to the power half multiplied by 4 to the power 1 fifth. And since 1 half add 1 fifth is 7 over 10, then we've got 4 to the power of 7 over 10. For part g, we've got the square root of the square root of 4. Or we've got 4 to the power of half to the power of half. And since a half times a half is a quarter, we've got 4 to the power of a quarter. And for the final part, we've, we've already seen in, the, in E part 1 that 8 is equal to 4 to the power of 3 over 2. So 
So we've got the square root of 8 here, so we've got 4 to the power of 3 over 2 to the power of a half. Or in other words, because 3 over 2 times a half is 3 over 4, we've got 4 to the power of 3 over 4. So in those previous questions, we touched on the basic rules of indices, which you can see here. So we've got x to the power n multiplied by x to the power m. So the base numbers there, x, must be the same. That's equivalent to x to the power of n plus m. And again, we can do this similar with division. x to the power n divided by x to the power m. The base numbers, x, must be the same. So that's equivalent to x to the power n minus m. And if we have x to the power m to the power n, that's equivalent to x to the power of m times n. So using those basic rules of indices, here's some more questions here just to test your understanding and your current knowledge. Can you simplify those nine expressions um, using those basic rules of indices? When you've done, press play on the video again and you can listen to the explanation and see the solutions. So, question one, using the first basic rule of indices, we have a to the power 11. For question two, in this question it's best to deal with the numerical parts first, so three times two is six, then deal with the powers of a, so a to the power six multiplied by a to the power one is a to the power seven, and then deal with the powers of b. b to the power 2 multiplied by b to the power 5 is b to the power 7. So we have 6, a to the power 7, b to the power 7. If we deal with question 3 in exactly the same way, then we have 5, a to the power 4, c to the power 5, d to the power 5. For question 4, we can use a second basic rule of indices to simplify d to the power 7 divided by d to the power 4 and get d to the power 3. For question 5, do the numerical parts first. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and then deal with the powers of x. x to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 3, because 6 take away 3 is 3. And for question 6, again similar, 16 divided by 6 is 8 over 3. e to the power 7 divided by e to the power 1 is e to the power 6. And f to the power negative 5 divided by f to the power 2 is f to the power negative 7. So we can rewrite that as 8 e to the power 6 over 3 f to the power 7. For question 7, using the third basic rule of indices, that simplifies to give us 3 to the power of 20. Similarly, question 8 simplifies to x to the power of 6. And in question 9, deal with the numerical parts and the powers of y separately. 8 to the power 2 is 64, and y to the power 4 to the power 2 is y to the power 8. So we've got 64 y to the power 8. An essential skill at A level is to be able to um, write an expression which may be written as an algebraic fraction or it might involve some roots and write that using uh, index form. So we have some basic rules for fractional and negative index indices so we know that 1 over x to the power n is equivalent to x to the power of negative n. And the nth root of x to the power m is equivalent to x to the power of m over n. So I want you to look at the six questions at the top and rewrite those expressions using indices. So you'll need a negative or fractional index. And for the three questions at the bottom, work out the values of those terms and write them down. When you've done, um, press play on the video again and the solutions will appear 
along with a brief explanation of each one. Okay, so the solutions, question 10. 1 over x is the same as 1 over x to the power 1, which is x to the power negative 1. In question 11, the numerical part is 3 over 2, and the power of x part is x to the power negative 4. So we have 3 over 2, x to the power of negative 4. Question 12, the square root of y is the same as is y to the power of 1 half. In question 13, the fourth root of x is, is equivalent to writing x to the power of quarter. In question 14, we have the cube root of y to the power of 4, so that's y to the power of 4 over 3. And in question 15, if we deal with a numerical part and the powers of x separately, the fourth root of 81 is 3, because 3 to the power of 4 is 81. And the fourth root of x to the power 8 is x squared, so we have 3x squared. Moving on to the three questions at the bottom. When we raise um, a value to the power 0, we always get 1. So 7 to the power 0 is 1. Moving on to the next question. 5x to the power 7 to the power 0 is also 1, because we're just raising 5x to the power 7 to the power 0. And in the final question, we have 12 multiplied by x to the power 0. x to the power 0 is 1, so 12 multiplied by x to the power 0 means 12 times 1, which is 12. So in this example, we've got six expressions, and we're going to use the basic rules of indices and roots to rewrite each expression. So for part A, um, we've got 3x squared multiplied by 5x to the power 6. Always deal with the numerical parts and the powers of x separately. So 3 fives of 15, x squared multiplied by x to the power 6 is x to the power 8. So we've got 15x to the power 8. For part B, again, deal with the numerical parts separately. So 10 over 2 is 5 and x to the power 12 divided by x to the power 4 is x to the power 8. In part c, we have 5 over x to the power 3. We can rewrite that as 5 multiplied by x to the power negative 3. Now part d is similar, except the 5 is on the denominator. So the numerical value is 1 over 5, so we have a fifth. And then also x to the power 3 is on the denominator, so that can be rewritten as x to the power of negative 3. So we have 1 fifth x to the power of negative 3. For part e, we've got the cube root of x to the power 4. That's the same as saying we've got x to the power 4 to the power of 3rd or x to the power 4 over 3. And in part f, we've got x to the power 3 over 4. So that's the same as saying we've got the fourth root of x cubed. In example two, we're going to take three expressions and we're going to simplify them um, or write them in a different form. So if we look at the first one, 3xy multiplied by 8xy to the power negative 2. If we deal with the numerical parts, the powers of x and the powers of y separately, that will give us... 3 times 8 is 24, x times x is x squared, and y to the power 1 multiplied by y to the power negative 2 is y to the power negative 1. So we have 24 x squared y to the power negative 1, which can also be written 24 x squared over y. If we move on to the middle part of the question, we're going to simplify the algebraic fraction that we've got there. The first thing to notice is that we can take a factor of 4a out of the numerator. So by doing that, we have 4a, and then in a bracket, 3b to the power negative 2, subtract 4, and then we have 8ab on the denominator. Now we can cancel the fraction down now because 4a 
divided by AAB is the same as 1 over 2B. So we've got 3B to the power negative 2 subtract 4 all over 2B. Now when we have an algebraic fraction which is more than one term on the numerator, we can separate that into more than one fraction. So in this case, we can rewrite that as 3b to the power of negative 2 over 2b subtract 4 over 2b. And each of those fractions can be rewritten. So the first one can be written as 3 over 2 b to the power of negative 3. And the second one, 4 over 2 is 2, so we've got 2 b to the power negative 1. Moving on to the last part of the question, we're going to um, write the square root of x divided by 5 multiplied by the cube root of x, and we're going to write that in the form k x to the power p, uh, where k and p are going to be constants that we will find as part of our working out. So to begin with, if we rewrite the parts of the algebraic fraction using indices, we can write the square root of x as x to the power of half and the cube root of x as x to the power of a third. So there, if we look at the numerical parts of that expression, we've got 1 over 5 or a fifth, and then we can simplify the powers of x by using the, uh, the rules for indices, x to the power half divided by x to the power of a third is the same as having x to the power of one half minus one third. And one half subtract a third is a sixth, so we end up with one fifth x to the power of one sixth. Two more um, expressions to simplify in example three. So for part a, we've got x to the power 6 over 8, and that's to the power of 1 third. Now we can deal with, since it's in a bracket, we can do x to the power 6 to the power of 1 third, and we can do 8 to the power of 1 third, and we end up there with x squared over 2, because x to the power 6 to the power of 3rd is x squared, and 8 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of 8, which is 2. Moving on to part b, uh, same kind of idea here, we've got 16a squared b to the power 8 and that's all raised to the power of 1 half and then on the denominator we have a b cubed. So if we deal with the numerator first, um, the power of a half is essentially meaning the square root of the expression in the bracket. If we deal with each part separately, the square root of 16 is 4 the square root of a squared is a, and the square root of b to the power a is b to the power 4. So we can simplify that to 4a b to the power 4, and it's all over a b cubed. And then that fraction can be cancelled down um, into 4b, since the a's cancel and b to the power 4 over b to the power 3 is just b to the power 1. So we have 4b to the power 1, or 4b. Example 4 addresses a fairly common mistake that a lot of students would make with this uh, question. Now we've got 16x squared plus 16y squared, all raised to the power of a half. Now a common mistake here would be to think that the answer to that is 4x plus 4y, but that is incorrect. So here's the explanation of, of how to simplify this properly. Um, if we first of all look at the bracket, we can take a factor of 16 outside the bracket. So we've actually got 16 multiplied by x squared plus y squared, and all of that is raised to the power of a half. Which means we've got 16 to the power of a half multiplied by x squared plus y squared to the power of a half. And 16 to the power of a half is 4. So we've got 4 multiplied by x squared plus y squared to the power of a half, and we can't simplify it any more than that. 